Yes, uh, today I want to show you um, how uh, the interplay of optics, accessories, and combination products, um, how they can interplay for get best imaging results with telecentric lenses in machine vision. Um, yes, I'm Dr. Claudia Ling, I'm the head of optics development here. And in my last webinar, in my last presentation, I showed you our new telecentric lens series, the TO series, a special um, designed um, for blue LEDs, but also working very well for white light LEDs and other colors. And um, yes, then I showed you that we have a lot of accessories and combination products. We have filters, lens holders, and a beam splitter unit, for example. And I want um, to focus in this presentation on these uh, products um, as well. Uh, or here you have some combination products, yeah, like a telecentric illumination or an area, area light. So um, yes, here's the outline of my presentation. First, I want to go um, to the effects which happen uh, if you use some optical filters on the object side or on the camera side. I uh, show you the spectral effects and the optical effects. Then I want to show you what happens if you use uh, extension rings. Shortly speaking, you have a small magnification, you have a big effect. Then I want to show you um, uh, what's the relation between the actual object field of a telecentric lens at the maximum object field diameter. You can still hear me? Okay. Um, yes, I okay. can. That is, uh, okay. Um, um, then um, I show you the uh, beam splitter unit. Uh, what's the uh, advantage to use it in transmission or in reflection? Um, and then I show you our reflection mirror and some give some insights to our lens holders. So first, optical filters. Uh, we can um, have um, it on the object side. Uh, and on our telecentric lenses, they have all a filter thread. And you can also have it on the camera side. We have special camera-sided filters in our program. And um, so here's an overview uh, of um, uh, how to use uh, use uh, the filter. Um, for example, we have neutral density filter. They constantly weaken the light uh, evenly over the entire spectral range. So it is if the dynamic range of the camera is not enough. Um, so uh, yes, you can use a neutral density uh, filter. Then we have polarization filters, color filters. Uh, color filters you can use to reduce a stray light and uh, for increasing contrast. And we have them for the colors of blue, green, yellow, and red. We have also UV blocking filters and a daylight cutoff filter uh, where the, only the infrared light can pass. So here's, for example, an um, yeah, application for a yellow filter, which I think is very interesting. Um, it is um, the illumination was with blue light and you have a fluorescent layer where your object is put down um, or laid down and then uh, it is reflected um, yellow light and because of the filter, the blue light is blocked and you have um, a very contrast uh, rich image on uh, the right side shown here. Okay, what happens if a filter is uh, set inside your um, lens or your, uh, your setup? Um, here we have um, uh, just a, a lens, then you put a filter uh, in front of the lens. Um, then we have a defocus, which is, I, I, sorry, just um, want, no. Uh -huh. no. I, I can't see it very good. No, oh, okay, I have to <laughs> live with this. Um, so, okay, we have a defocus on the, um, uh, but the, the um, back focal length of the camera is fixed. So we have to uh, move it to the um, working distance, what we see here. 
So we have a change in the working distance if we have a filter in, um, in the setup uh, in front of the lens. Uh, I have here the formula, you can calculate this. Um, it is so the new working distance, we have a design working distance. Uh, you add um, an amount uh, of a change of uh, the focal distance. Um, yes, there's a shift um, because of the glass length. And of course, if you have a mechanical, uh, yeah, a filter, you have a mechanical length, uh, this must be um, uh, subtracted. So, uh, for example, if you have a um, working distance of 160 millimeters, yes, you get uh, about 170, uh, 157 millimeters um, as a result uh, for um, working distance. So um, here is a shift of the focal distance. I, it, um, I think the formula in the middle is quite helpful. It is because of the refractive index of glass is 1.5. It is nearly one third of the filter thickness. So if you have a filter thickness of two millimeters, it's nearly 0 0.67 millimeters. Okay, now I try to switch. Um, okay, I, I have to move it, no. Okay, Freigabe. Okay. Yeah, we try to see it in the lab video. Here's our mission setup for testing our telecentric lenses. The camera is a Manta 1236B from a light vision with a sensor size of 1.1 inches and a pixel pitch of 3.45 microns. This is a lens of the TO44 series. It is a TO44 slash 6.2 with a magnification of 0.14. First, I would like to demonstrate the image quality of this telecentric lens without a filter. I set an F number of six, which means we have a large aperture and high resolution. Now I focus the get a sharp image. Here you see a value which visualizes the sharpness. The higher this value, the sharper the image. After this procedure, we determine the edge steepness in microns to have a measure which can be compared to the design values. You see that the values are between six and nine micrometers. Now I measure the working distance. It is 160 millimeters. Here I have a blue filter, which passes only the blue light. It can be screwed directly to the front end of the lens. It can be used to reduce tray light and protect your lens from dust and dirt. It just weakens the intensity a little. To get a sharp image again, I have to move the target towards the light source. Now the working distance is reduced. It is almost 157 millimeters, which is mainly due to the mechanical thickness of the filter. Now I check the image quality. It is almost the same as without the filter because the rays pass through the filter quite parallel. Okay, come back to my presentation. Um, so now um, we have the same, um, we can put the filter on the camera side. Um, yes, we have it without filter, then we have a, a shift of the focal length and uh, we have a longer uh, uh, focus and we have to compensate it if we change the focal working distance and which increases uh, by setting in a filter on the camera side. So we have also a formula here. We don't uh, have a mechanical setup. So, um, but here we have in contrast uh, to a filter object side, uh, taken to account the magnification, which goes into a squared. So uh, here's just for an overview. Um, the um, how I get to this relation, uh, perhaps it's interesting um, because we have a deep imaging scale is the squared of the normal uh, magnification. And if you have a distance on the image side um, and want to bring it on the object side, you have to uh, divide by the um, deep imaging scale or the, the um, magnification squared. So now I come back to the um, next, or the, I come to the next video of the laboratory with the camera-sided filters. Here you can see a red filter 
that is to be screwed into our lenses on the camera side. The glass has a thickness of about 2 mm. However, the filter does not wear mechanically. The lens can be screwed to the camera as usual. To make sure we have high transmission, I need to switch to the red light. To get a sharp image, I have to refocus. The target is moved towards the light source. The working distance is now about 205 mm. That is a good 36 mm more than with this lens and at this light color without a filter. The large value is due to the thickness of the glass and the relatively low magnification of this lens. The imaging performance is not measurably reduced by the filter in this case. Here you see the edge steepness with and without the filter in comparison. However, if this is the case, the imaging performance can be optimized by stopping down. Here I have another lens from the TO44 series. The TO44 flash 11.0. The magnification is 0.25. The lens has a different working distance. The working distance without the filter is 170 millimeters in the blue and 120 millimeters in the red. Now I screwed the red filter back in. This makes the working distance 130 millimeters, which is only about 10 millimeters longer than without the filter. Now you can compare the image without and with filter. In this case, the edge steepness for the outermost field points is reduced because of the astigmatism introduced by the filter. What you can also see here is that the magnification is slightly reduced by a camera side filter. In this case, it is only 0.247. This is because the filter slightly shortens the image distance. Okay. Come back to the presentation. Now um, I want to show the effects of the extension rings. Yes, we come back to um, the videos from the laboratory. To adjust the working distance, we offer extension rings in 0.5 and 1 millimeter increments. Here I put in one millimeter extension ring to the TO44 slash 6.2. With this ring, the lens can still be screwed to the camera with a good two thread turns. The thread length of our lenses is 3.8 millimeters for C-mount. Now I have to refocus again. For this, I move the target in the direction of the camera. I switch back to the blue light. The new working distance is 110 millimeters. This is about 50 millimeters less than originally. The resolution remains almost the same. However, the magnification increases slightly because the image distance has increased. For the TO44 slash 11.0, the new working distance is 100 millimeters. This is about 17 millimeters less than without extension ring. The magnification also slightly increases. Here you see the comparison image without extension ring. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here you have uh, also a formula uh, where you can calculate the um, shortening of the working distance by um, an extension ring of uh, thickness D. Yes, and though you see um, you can um, have an extension ring of a certain thickness to compensate for a back filter. Okay. Now I want to show you a video where you can see the actual object field and the uh, relation and the maximum um, object field diameter. Here we have again the TO44 slash 11.0 lens. It images an object field diagonal of 44 millimeters on 11 millimeter sensor diagonal. The sensor diagonal is indicated here by the yellow circle. The sensor with this diagonal would then be a two third inch sensor. For this, the green lines are shown here. Okay. Um, so it is here uh, summarized. You have. Um, um, maximum um, object field diameter, for example, for the TO44, this would be 44 millimeters. 
and it is imaged on 11 millimeters sensor di diagonal uh, for a two third inch sensor. And um, yes, uh, it is. Uh, this is the maximum um, diameter of the sensor. And yeah, there you uh, can see uh, the relation, how big must be a sensor, for example, if you want to test the whole field. And you can also use uh, the lens with uh, this whole field, but you have to use a bigger sensor size. And though you can optimize um, if you have, um, for example, a smaller lens diameter, which fits also to your object, or uh, you, you can uh, have uh, use a bigger lens diameter, which can cost a little bit more. So there you can have um, a tool to optimize your image imaging. So now I want to come to the beam splitter unit uh, to use in reflection or transmission. First, I want to show um, a video from the laboratory. allows you to take images of objects in reflection with the help of a top illumination tool. To check the imaging performance, I use a transmitted light here. Normally, the area illumination would be screwed here on the back of the beam splitter unit. Then the light in transmission through the beam splitter plate would illuminate the object. The object is reflected to the lens by a reflection of the semi-transparent beam splitter plate and imaged onto the sensor via the lens. You can see here that there is a sharper image when the reflection path is taken for imaging, since the beam path does not pass through the inclined glass plate, in contrast to transmission. Oh yeah, okay. And then I show the video from the transmission path. Here, the beam splitter unit is used <clears throat> for imaging in transmission. To check the image quality, I use the transmitted light here again. The object would be first illuminated via a coaxial reflected illumination. The beam path from the object to the sensor then passes through the inclined beam splitter plate. This can lead to a worse image quality in transmission. However, this is only slightly the case here. So, um, yes, now I want to explain what happens if we use the transmission path at the beam splitter unit. And for this, I have modeled this. Um, um, telecentric lens, one times with the F number six and one times with the F number 11. And so you see here the Y set plane and the X set plane. And you see on the one um, times um, uh, the uh, inclined beam splitter plate acts um, yeah, as a prism. And in the other case, it acts like a plant parallel uh, glass plate. And so we have here the spot diagrams, and it is, makes a difference if you have a low F number or um, a high F number. Uh, in the one case, you see here how um, in one direction, the spot uh, is like a line. And because and the circle is an airy disk and it uh, affects image quality, and in the other case, on F number 11, it is uh, so small that the airy disk um, or, um, is bigger than this line. And so it is, um, um, yeah, goes to, into the diffraction limit. And the effect um, does not, uh, or the, this um, yeah, effect does not um, decrease your image quality. And you see here the waveform. Uh, it is like um, this uh, form. And um, so you he see here the MTF. You see on the one time on F6, you have, as uh, Mr. Dr. Boris Lange said, you have the astigmatism and you can see it in the MTF. One is uh, diffraction limited and the other is quite worse. And if you stop down, yes, you can um, small um, this effect. And um, yes, it don't 
appears um, such uh, much. So uh, to summarize the beam splitter unit, it introduces um, astigmatism by using transmission and the effects that uh, depends a lot of the F number, but also on the magnification. So here, the higher the magnification, the bigger is the effect. An inclined glass plate acts in one direction um, as a prism and in the other as a uh, plain glass plate. And so you have to keep this in mind when using this uh, beam splitter unit, it can be used uh, on the one hand as a coaxial top elimination, but on the other hand, other hand, it can also be used as an image splitting unit. So now I want to present, ah, okay. Uh, I have two uh, videos left. The, um, if there are space problems in the setup, there's also a deflection mirror available. This can be screwed onto the lens via an adapter. This allows the object to be imaged with a transmitted light through the lens. The working distance here is 85 millimeters. Due to the glass path in the prism, the working distance is not reduced as much as the adapter would suggest. The image performance is not affected, only the image detail is a little reduced, but it still fits the specified sense of size. Okay. So, okay. And now I just want to present our lens holders. Here we see the lenses in a setup to ensure that the lenses are also held mechanically stable. We also offer lens holders. These are matched to the lens diameters. Here they are provided with a fit so that the lens can be precisely held in the holder. Okay, this was my last video. Um, I, uh, how um, much minutes uh, do I have? <laughs> I missed two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I just want uh, to present. Um, I, as I we saw in the video, we have a fit on all our um, lenses. And um, uh, on, on, on the bigger lenses, uh, we have a new type of a lens holder for a diameter of 45 millimeters. And in the front to, um, yes, fix it, uh, you have also a filter thread in front of the lens uh, where you can um, screw it uh, from, uh, yes, from the front. And here is a new uh, lens holder for a um, diameter of 45 millimeters and normally we have the 32 millimeters. So I summarize. So um, yes, combination products and accessories uh, can extend and um, adapt the imaging performance of the telecentric lenses. And they uh, for, um, affect more or less um, imaging performance like uh, working distance, magnification and resolution. And special care um, should be always be taken when the glass plate is used, where the uh, beams uh, pass um, uh, on, a, on a certain angle uh, because they introduce astigmatism and they can um, affect your image quality. The effects can be calculated. I have shown you some formulas here in the presentation. And if you need uh, more information, you can uh, get this from our um, company. Uh, so yes, um, I thank you. Um, and here are my contact data. So if you have some question, you can email us or visit our website. And of course, you can use the chat here. Thank you.